our work right now on the planet is to bring honoring and sanctity to the invisible just as much as the visible. The invisible results are things like feeling good, things like feeling connected, things like our health, our well-being, a feeling of joy, pleasure. Embodiment can't be faked once you're in an open state where you actually can see through a clear lens. You know, you're not clouded by fear, you're not clouded by the amygdala, you're not clouded by society's news and all the fear-based stuff, and you're just with you. Then you get to decide where you think we actually are. It is possible to navigate pain with grace. Energy is information. We're here to experience the full spectrum. That worthiness is hard for you. There's nothing wrong with you. It is a muscle that we kind of have to learn how to access. You are not disempowered and you have power in every area of your life all the time. I believe that chronic illness is an opportunity for us to heal. Health, it's a choice. Listening to your body if you so choose. My prayer for the world would be that they would know the infinite love of God. Aloha and welcome to the Body and Soul Wisdom Podcast, formerly known as the Embodied Healing Self Podcast, with your host, Jen Mons. Join me each week for soul-inspired, conscious conversations around awakening to your soul purpose through five-element well-being. Thank you so much for joining in. Hello, hello. Welcome back, everyone. Ah, it feels so good to be recording podcasts again. I have been traveling so much lately. It's been Uh, honestly quite amazing. My life has been abundantly full with so many blessings. Many of you know my oldest daughter back in March was accepted into just an amazing school in Hawaii to finish high school as a 16-year-old for her junior and senior year. And my younger daughter continues to just really literally make waves in the world of surfing And as a family, we drove our adventure van out to California from Florida, which is about 40 hours, 16 or 17 of it, which is Texas, in case you're wondering. And on the way back, my girls and I, just a girls only trip, my husband had to fly back for work. We did this amazing trip through all of the state parks in Utah and Arizona and just had the most wonderful time. And All in between, I was able to hold a couple of private VIP retreats, which was super special. And just before that, I went on a surf training trip with my younger daughter to Costa Rica. So today is August 30th. You guys will hear this probably in two weeks, but I have literally been gone for like four months. And I'm so grateful that I've created a a work-life balance where I can do that. I can work on the road and support my family and my girls in what they do because if I do this in my as my service to the world for other women, I sure as hell hope so. It starts in my home and it does and it's so rewarding. And I actually had the intention of recording a podcast with my older daughter before she left and we were so busy having fun we didn't get the chance to do that, but when she comes home for Christmas, I will be sure to do that because the amount of courage and confidence it takes to do something like that is mind-blowing. And for those of you that don't know, she refuses to have a cell phone. I'm literally like a parent of 1999. And I mean, she's such an old wise soul. She's such a super rad kid. And she's just like, you know, mom, the cell phone is like making everybody totally check out and not be present. Like, how are you supposed to make friends when everybody's on their cell phone? And Yeah, so um, it feels good to be back. I've been listening to a lot of podcasts. It feels good to be back recording. And I am like just, my heart is so full right now because last weekend I hosted a retreat for our North Star Collective ladies, which was just so amazing. We spend six months together. And at the end of the six months, we come together in my hometown or close to my hometown, Jacksonville Beach, and we spend a very deep, intimate day together and weekend 
healing and it's amazing. And I am heading into another retreat this weekend, the Embodied Feminine Retreat, which sold out in three days. It will be held at the Kashi Ashram down in Sebastian, Florida. And I'm so excited to welcome 20 beautiful women into that sacred space of, oh, we have such fun stuff planned. It's feminine archetype work and I can't give it all away, but a fire ceremony and a goddess ceremony and so much movement and kundalini and yoga. And it's all about releasing and receiving and it's just so powerful and awesome. So I'm on a little bit of a, I guess, a natural high you could say right now. One of the things that one of the ladies said over the weekend that made me think of this podcast topic was just, you know, speaking to how we make such a big deal about putting ourselves first. Like we, we, we make all these excuses about why we can't invest in ourselves. Like we can spend $100 on yoga pants, but we don't want to spend $100 on a massage or you know, we can go spend five grand on a vacation, which is totally necessary. I'm like the queen of loving vacations, but we won't spend five grand on a program that will completely transform our lives or we will do so with resistance, which was what she was speaking to. So I wanted to talk a little bit about something that is really powerful when you step into it. And it's the difference between consumer consciousness and creator consciousness. And it's really the idea that maybe from my perception, what I've noticed is there's really two types of people. There's consumers and creators, or maybe we all kind of flux between the two energies. And those kind of people's people show up as either people who are spending or investing. And <laughs> there's a very, there's a, there's like a point that I've noticed separates people. Like where you're going to go in your life based on how you use financial currency or energy it's kind of like an outward expression of yourself. And uh, many of you know, I've created the five element wealth program and the prosperity course where we, we go into learning the seven saboteurs of our relationship with money and understanding and realizing how, how it's linked to love and intimacy and also nutrition, because a lot of it's about receiving. There's a lot of it in the sacral chakra and whatever those sabotaging behaviors are and those limiting beliefs are, they're affecting us in other parts of our lives. And so the prosperity course, although we are talking about our relationship with money, because that's the way it's showing up for some women, we're diving deep into how it's affecting intimacy in our marriage or the way that we nourish ourselves, because it's all related. Just trust me when I say that it's all related. And somehow at some point in time, if you embody the full apex of well-being, the Pentagon, the the five elements of well-being, it's going to be physical, emotional, your mindset, spiritual, and financial. And, you know, some women start with the financial piece and they do really well, but they don't know how to nourish themselves physically. Some people, for me, it started with nutrition and then it went to emotional empowerment and then to my mindset, my spirituality, and then the financial piece. And so all five of those are a well-integrated woman, man or woman, but speaking to women here mostly because that's my community and my clients. And we're in a time where we it's it's almost like a responsibility and our birthright to claim all of those and women are doing it the women in my circle are doing it and it's really super freaking awesome it's super awesome i mean i you know i'm just going to talk about jackie for a second who i private coached with and was is so amazing and was working corporate and you know making really good money super successful and she loves to travel. She's an adventurous spirit. And she decided that she her best work is done for herself and she can make the same income and work half the time so that she can have more time to work on her well-being, which is super awesome. 
so many of the women that I have worked with have gone on to create, to begin creating women's circles and retreats and programs and offerings either on the side with their other job so that they can eventually become full-time in that or full-time, which is super fun. And it just creates a greater impact in the world. You, I would invite you to listen to my podcast, Amplify Your Values and Voice in the World, which I talk about through prosperity consciousness. So that's what prosperity consciousness is, is just creating a bigger impact in the world through the currency of investing. So let's talk about this a little bit today because I want to... I want to invite you to consider where you notice you show up in these different states of consciousness. And one of my clients said to me the other day, and she teaches this in yoga class now, I love it. One of the things I I said in one of my group coaching calls is, if you want to know what your values are, if you want to know if you're aligned with your values, go check your schedule and your credit card because Time and money show us, because they're resources, where our values truly lie. And if you say you value, uh, you know, health, then it should show up in your schedule and it should show up in your finances, meaning you're probably invested in going to yoga classes in a gym and eating healthy food. So right now I, I ask you, this is an invitation for you to check yourself on your values. Where am I spending my time and my money? Is it aligned with my values? And if the answer is yes, then you're probably an investor. You probably have creator consciousness. You're going to be resourced more because you're an investor. And that investment and that resource being resourced, you're being resourced. If you invest in yourself, you are being resourced. You're either being resourced by healthy foods or you're being resourced by support, whether that be coach, therapist, mentor, teacher, whatever it is, you are being resourced. And when you are resourced, that's the, that's, that's what prosperity consciousness is. You can then step into what I am calling a creatrix, that creator consciousness, and you become very, very creative. And it's just amazing. You know, but one of the things that I want to speak to for a second, one of the other things that came up in our our retreat is that it's necessary, it's absolutely necessary to recognize and have awareness around your sabotaging behaviors and especially the emotions that we suppress such as sadness and anger and shame and resentment because when we are stuck in those That creator consciousness can't come through. But when we give ourselves permission to process those, like we did over this the weekend, and what happened in my experience, what happened to me six years ago when I went to my first deeply transformational retreat, when I was given permission to really access anger that I had suppressed for 20 years, it's like my sacral chakra just opened up because anger is in the solar plexus and resentment and a lot of those emotions that we suppress. And so it was blocked. And then when I unblocked that solar plexus and gave myself permission, anger is just passion misdirected. It literally opened up the sacral chakra, which is where creativity is. And like, I can't stop creating. I was a former engineer. I never thought of myself as being creative. And I, I cannot stop the creativity. Sometimes I almost think it's a little too much. But we can access that creator consciousness. What's the difference between creator consciousness and consumer consciousness? Well, think about it for a moment. A consumer is somebody who is is in survival mode. They have to consume to survive. Either they are energy vampires and they suck from other people, they copy other people, they imitate other people, they use other people... Or on the other hand, you know, it might not be that type of energy and consumer consciousness. It could just be the type where when you feel empty or a void inside because you're not choosing to invest in yourself, you go out and you you temporarily consume something, whether it be through food, which is, you know, you have to ask yourself like, Am I showing up in my relationship to food in a healthy way? But I'm talking about like consuming unconsciously for comfort in a very unconscious and healthy way. That's one way we do it. Shopping and spending is another way. You know, particularly women, they feel an empty void. Maybe you need to feel 
let's just say you need to feel, you're feeling unloved in your marriage or your relationship at home or you're not feeling good enough in some way or you don't feel good about yourself. Ladies, I'm asking you, admit to yourself, how many times do you go out shopping for that temporary gratification? So consumer consciousness is temporary. It's temporary short-term fix gratification. Creative consciousness is about the big picture, right? Like when we create babies, it's it's a lifelong commitment. It's, you you know, once once you become a mother, you're a mother, lifelong commitment. So that creator consciousness, which is the feminine energy, where which is where it all begins, is a commitment. It's an act of devotion. It's it's something you build upon. It's it's one step in front of the next it's the journey and it's the willingness to know that you can overcome or accept and embody what it is in that moment you need to to take that next step whereas consumer consciousness again is like i need instant gratification in this moment so let's talk about spending versus investing because that's really how it shows up in the in the action because in order to get results that we want that all comes from aligned action so is our aligned action aligned with our values are we using our resources of time and money to align to what matters to us and are we taking action in that area through time and money to put the intention into our values because that's how we show up in the world. At the end of the day, that is how you show up in the world. That's what you teach your children. Whether you say it or not, what you do is what is teaching them. They're watching. You know, that's one of the things that I've learned as I have witnessed my 16-year-old moving off to Hawaii is this overwhelming sense of gratitude that everything that I've ever taught that she's been watching and I had no idea through yoga teaching my retreats through breath work through empowering women through my podcast even though it was never directly to her now I'm witnessing her just so amazing you know waking up every morning doing yoga going out to the permaculture garden and juicing herself leading her roommate in some breath work and meditation you know taking advantage of the outdoor club and scuba diving she attended a hospice lantern lighting ceremony on a saturday night like what 16 year old does that right so it feels really good to know that they're watching what we do and how we show up and that gives them permission to be that kind of person without us telling them because chances are if you're telling them then they're not going to want to do it so it feels really good to embody that creator consciousness which is what we as women are born to do so you have two choices in the aligned action you can spend spending is of less value spending is buying the hundred dollar yoga pants spending is buying for that short-term gratification spending is spending with unconsciously without thinking about it if you even and this can be even in an opportunity it's like the the person who goes out with friends and just drops a bunch of money you know down for dinner and just unconsciously thinks about what they're doing because in that moment it feels good so it's it's kind of an instant thing it's unconscious you're not really thinking about it it's it's just for that instant gratification and or it's for external validation it's to get a response out of somebody else it's for approval or it's you know to change really to fill a void really it's filling a void that doesn't feel good it's trying to change something what is investing investing is long term investing is embodied it is empowered it is the journey not the results it is you get to the results but it's all about the commitment and the devotion whether you're investing time to learn something to learn a skill to go to college to get a degree to become a doctor or to be a professional dancer or surfer to put the commitment in to improve your skills and talents 
It's investing time and or money to get there because everything requires both of those. And so investment is long-term and the energy of investment is so much bigger. It allows you to tap into that creator consciousness because you're being resourced. You're being resourced by yourself by saying, I am worth it. I am worth this gym membership. I am worth this monthly yoga membership. I am worth eating organic healthy foods. I am worth this, you know, three-day retreat to change my life or a monthly massage. It's really standing in that place of knowing your worth and the willingness to commit to it, but consciously. Because some people have the financial resources to do it. And even when they're doing it, they're not fully receiving. And that's the super important part is investment is an exchange of energy where you're intentional so that you're ready to receive. And quite honestly, a lot of times that means that that point of investment has to be a little uncomfortable. There, there might, I can't tell you how many times I've been at that point of making an uncomfortable decision. And those are the moments that are more worth it than any because you really have to get clear on is this really worth the time and the money because I have to sacrifice something else for it. If you don't have to give up something for it, it, it may not hold as much of a value. Whether that be time or money, For me, my love language is quality time. So time is a big thing for me. And it's it's why I'm very, very intentional if I decide to do private coaching, because I'm it's not for everybody. It's a co-creation. It's not yeah, I have to make sure that it's a really, really good match and the right person. Because time is, in my opinion, my most precious resource. So a couple of things for you to think about when you ask yourself, am I, am I a spender or an investor? Do I think consciously about where I'm investing my time and money? Am I, so even if this goes, let's speak about time for a second, people pleasers, right? Like, are you giving your time away to, to easily to somebody else? Are you saying yes to things that that you don't really need to say yes to. It's just the same thing as buying the $100 pair of yoga pants that you don't need. It's the same thing, whether it's time or money. When you're investing, you're intentional and you're asking yourself, is this aligned with my values? Do I need this? Does this serve me right now? What purpose does this serve? How is this going to help me? How does this help me to step into who I want to become? If you say you value your health, go, I mean, and you don't have enough yoga pants, okay, but, or you could go spend, you know, the hundred dollars on a mentor or an energy healing session and get something a little bit deeper, a little bit more. So I hope I have given you uh, some things to think about today. I'd love to hear what you think. This is really, why does this matter? Because there there are really two types of people in the world. And the people who are living in creator consciousness are the people who have access to more freedom. They have more access to time freedom, financial freedom, health freedom, school freedom, all the freedoms, travel freedom, whatever you want kind of freedom with healthy discernment. But that kind of sovereign place of being able to make your own decisions comes when you live in creator consciousness, which comes from the willingness to, to invest. In my prosperity course, we talk about the four levels of prosperity. One, which is the employee. Two, which is the self-employed. Three, which is the business owner. And four, which is the investor. And the investor is the person who in prosperity consciousness is able to receive to then give back 
more. So prosperity is about receiving and being resourced, whether that be support. I mean, you've heard me say before, I have very rarely ever not had a coach or a healer by my side over the past 15 years. And it just depends on where I am. It de- you know, for eight years, I was coming through some radical changes with my health and wellness and had many, many holistic healers by my side. After that, it was a lot more life coaching. And then for the past four or five years, it's, it's been amazing business coaches. And that I've been resourced because I've been willing to invest in myself. So yes, of course, I'm going to invite you to invest in yourself in some way. There's three months left in 2022. And this really separates the people also in fear consciousness or trust and love consciousness. And you get to choose. No matter what your external experience is, after doing this work for so long, one thing that I know and witness is that we're all experiencing very similar emotions on the inside, no matter what the external experience is. We've all experienced loss and shame and guilt and frustration and sadness and anger and rejection and betrayal. And we've also had moments of experiencing joy and freedom and happiness and peace. And so we get to choose. And when you take those, what people would call label, what people would label as negative emotions, and you transmute them, into your gifts, that's where the freedom lies. That's where the creator consciousness a lot lies. And that takes a willingness to commit and invest in yourself. So uh, I invite you, invest in yourself in some way, whether it be a massage or yoga or healthy food, a mentor or a coach, if you're really ready to radically change your life, then honestly, get a coach, get a mentor. And What they do is empower you, help you, teach you, guide you into fully stepping into and owning your true self so that you can have that freedom. They they hold the vision that you have for yourself, or maybe you can't see it. They hold it for you until you're ready, ready to receive it. They guide you along the way to take those steps. They can see your blind spots that you can't see. They'll ask you powerful questions to help you really get clear on what it is that you really want and what you need to get there because you deserve it and you matter and your dreams matter, just like the rest of us. And so I want to invite you to just ask yourself, you know, where, where does my consciousness lie? Where, how am I showing up in the world? And what aligned action can I take to welcome more creativity? to invest in myself, time or money. Maybe it's just committing to your own yoga practice or your own daily journaling. And if you need support, I have some tools to help you. We have a a daily devotion journaling membership. You get a journal prompt every single day. And they these journal prompts are not like other journal prompts. They activate the reticular activating system. They cover everything from masculine and feminine energies to your relationship to your body, to money, to joy, to your dreams, to there's just every month there's a new theme in it. It's amazing. And then we meet every new moon for reflection and intention setting. And then every equinox and solstice for quarterly planning. So Super exciting there. You can check that out at 13 Moons Daily Devotion, genmons.com forward slash 13 Moons. We'll put the link in the show notes. And then if you're healing your relationship to money and prosperity consciousness, then I invite you to check out the prosperity course, genmons.com forward slash prosperity. And uh, we're going to have a new, you can join anytime, but we're going to have a new group happening October 1st. And if you mention this episode, I'll give you $100 off. Why not? Just let me know that you heard that on the episode, and I'd be happy to do so just to thank you for being a listener of this show. So sending you lots of love to own, take ownership 
of your creative energy, invest in yourself in some way through healthy foods, through exercise, through quality time with your spouse, to a walk in nature, all the way to a new coach, finding some way to invest in yourself and have ownership of yourself and your life and start doing the things that you love. Wishing you all a super happy day and sending you lots of love. Thank you so much for listening again this week and feel free to share this episode with anybody who needs to hear this. And I look forward to seeing you next week. Aloha. The content of this podcast is to educate, inspire, and inform you of pathways to an embodied healing self. It is not intended to be a substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment. Always seek the advice from your medical doctor, therapist, registered dietitian, or nutritionist for any questions you may have regarding your diagnosis or condition. Hello friends and thank you so much for joining again each week on the Body and Soul Wisdom Podcast, formerly the Embodied Healing Self Podcast. I am so deeply honored to share this space with you every week. I know that there are many other podcasts that you could be tuning into and our community is expanding and growing more with each new episode. I'd like to invite you to come on over to genmons.com forward slash tribe and receive some of the wonderful gifts that we have for you, a meditation bundle, energetic alignment, five element wealth, prosperity, consciousness. We have a ton of different gifts available for you to enjoy. Now, we have one small favor to ask. In order for this podcast to get into the hearts and souls of like and light minded people, we need your support. We would love your review and would love it if you'd head on over to genmonds.com forward slash podcast to leave a review or leave one on iTunes so that we can continue to share the love beyond out into the world. Thank you so much again for joining in. We'll see you next week.